Good day, judges, teachers, and fellow participants. My name is Nicole. And I'm Sushen. We're from Espeja Central City, and today we'll be presenting our research entitled The EcoSnap, which is an investigation of utilizing spent coffee grounds in sustainable sanitary napkins. As girls, we see and understand that sanitary napkins are a necessity. Unfortunately, sanitary napkins are made up of 90% plastics and can take hundreds of years to degrade. 26 tons of sanitary napkin waste is produced per day in Indonesia alone. This contributes to the plastic problem. On the other hand, Indonesia is one of the world's top producers of coffee. In 2019, Indonesia produced 10.7 million bags of coffee, and consumption rates within the country are also increasing. Hence, we produce plenty of coffee-related organic wastes every year, notably spent coffee grounds, or SEG. This is no small issue, as SEG can release methane gas when improperly disposed, which in turn contributes to climate change. Thus, this study aims to reduce plastic pollution by creating biodegradable sanitary napkins out of SEG, a waste that is abundant in Indonesia. Furthermore, it investigates the effects of utilizing SEG fibers towards the maximum liquid capacity stored, moisture retention, and absorbency rate of our created sanitary napkin in comparison to a commercial one. Sanitary napkins are generally made of four layers, the emollient top sheet, distribution layer, absorbent core, and impermeable back sheet. The third layer, the absorbent core, serves the main function of retaining blood flow. Natural fibers from organic waste have many advantages, and cellulose, a polysaccharide within natural fibers, can be extracted from SEG and is highly absorbent, has strong tensile strength, is highly disposable and renewable, as well as recyclable and biodegradable. Along with these characteristics, it makes up about 47.5% of SEG. This makes it a good base material for a sanitary pad's absorbent core. Our experiment was carried out in three phases. The first phase was extracting cellulose from the SEG. Firstly, we washed and filtered 250 grams of SEG, then heated it up with water at 60 degrees Celsius for one hour. Then, we filtered this and reheated the SEG with 10 grams of sodium hydroxide and distilled water at 80 degrees Celsius for two hours. Through this, we removed a majority of the lignin present in the SEG, hence isolating the cellulose. We then proceeded to remove the remainder of the lignin through the bleaching process. Here, we treated the SCG with equal parts of acetate buffer and sodium hypochlorite. We heated this to 80 degrees Celsius for two hours, twice. Finally, we washed, filtered, and dried the SCG pulp in an oven. The second phase was creating the sanitary napkins, which consisted of sewing together three different layers. The first layer was the emollient top sheet, which was made out of cheesecloth. The second layer was the absorbent core, which was made out of the SEG pulp, and the third layer was the back sheet, which was made out of bioplastic and another layer of cheesecloth. The pads we created for testing were smaller than the average sanitary pad for practicality purposes, as we were aiming to simply test the potential of the SEG pulp in acting as an absorbent layer. To ensure that we had something to compare it to, we also made sanitary napkin test pads using commercial fluff pulp as the absorbent layer. The third phase was testing. Three different tests were conducted. The first test was the maximum capacity test, which aimed to see how much liquid a pad could absorb. The second test was the moisture retention test, which aimed to see how well the pad retained liquid under varying conditions. And the third test was the absorbency rate test, which aimed to see how quickly the pad could absorb liquid. Here are the results we obtained through the experiment, including descriptive statistics as well as inferential statistics in the form of p-value taken from the ANOVA test. As can be seen from this first, first graph of average maximum capacity, the SCG pulp based pad had an average maximum capacity of 13.9 grams, whereas the commercial pulp based pad had an average maximum capacity of 24.8 grams. Based on the inferential statistics taken from the ANOVA test, the maximum capacity had a p-value of 0, 0.000, indicating that it is a significant difference. This means that the SCG base pad had a significantly lower maximum capacity compared to the commercial base pad. This may have resulted from the SCG cellulose's powder-like form that is different from the commercial pad pulp's fluff-like form. 
Because of this difference in form, this meant that for the same thickness of pulp, the commercial base pad may have had more absorbent material compared to the SEG pulp. Furthermore, SEG's powder-like form caused it to have lower cohesion and surface tension, causing it to rupture easily under pressure, which may have further affected its maximum capacity. In the second graph of moisture retention, it can be seen that the SEG pulp base pad had an average moisture retention of 95.5% while the commercial pulp base pad had an average moisture retention of 95.8%. The moisture retention had a p-value of 0 0.403, indicating that there is no significant difference between the two data. This tells us that although the SEG base pulp did not exceed the commercial base pulp in moisture retention, it can be considered comparable or on the same level as the common commercial pad and means that it can work just as effectively as it can. Through this last graph, it can be seen that the SCG pulp-based pad absorbed an average of 0.36 drops per second, while the commercial pulp-based pad absorbed an average of 0.08 drops per second. Meanwhile, the p-value obtained was 0.000, indicating that there was a significant difference between the two pads. This shows that the SCG pulp-based pad was actually able to absorb liquid much faster than a commercial pulp-based pad. Overall, a main strength of our experiment was that all results obtained were fairly accurate. There was no significant difference between data values from trial to trial, and standard deviations were relatively small, indicating a small spread in data. Another strength was that the SEG absorbent base was able to compare with the commercial absorbent base in terms of moisture retention, and even had a higher absorption rate. Meanwhile, the main weakness of this experiment was that the SEG absorbent base turned out to have a lower maximum capacity than the commercial base. Furthermore, it also had a much higher mass compared to the commercial base, despite being the same thickness. It was observed that this might have been because the SEG pulp was slightly moist and dense in texture. Hence, it is believed that the mass of the SEG absorbent base could be reduced through improvements in the cellulose extraction process. For instance, we could repeat the lignin separation bleaching treatment, and drying process a few more times, which is actually what most studies recommend. Additionally, sodium chloride instead of sodium hypochlorite should be used. This is because under extreme conditions, sodium hypochlorite could potentially damage the cellulose fibers in the spent coffee grounds, leading to a more weak and brittle final product. In turn, this could have impacted the quality of the SEG absorbent base. In conclusion, this study aimed to utilize spent coffee grounds, a common waste, to create sustainable sanitary napkins. Over the years, creating a more eco-friendly sanitary pad has indeed been a topic of interest to many. However, this particular study looks into how spent coffee grounds can be repurposed into a sanitary pad's absorbent core, which is something that has not been previously done. It has been found that SCG can indeed be utilized to create biodegradable sanitary napkins as the absorbent core material. We found that SCG has an equal capacity to retain moisture and a quicker absorption rate in contrast to regular commercial fluff pulp. However, the maximum capacity of the SCG pad is still lower than a commercial one. Hence, ways to improve this must be further investigated in future work. For future work, this research can be further developed by investigating further ways to increase maximum capacity of the SEG pulp, such as through finding optimum cellulose isolation during cellulose extraction required, or investigating methods to transform the pulp's powder form into fluff. As the focus of this research had also been on testing and comparing absorbent core qualities to a common commercial pad, Future work can also be done that focuses on production and usability of the SEG sanitary napkin, including texture, comfort for wear, and hygienity, as well as testing the sanitary napkin's biodegradability. Although it certainly needs further development and research, we truly believe that spent coffee grounds has the potential to become an effective absorbent core for biodegradable sanitary napkins. Through further exploration of the method and production, we hope that the SEG-based biodegradable sanitary napkin, or EcoSnap, can become the sustainable solution that we need to decrease plastic pollution and the growing amounts of SEG waste found in Indonesia, 
and become beneficial for us all. Thank you.